and let everyone in. And I'll do the introducing. Oh, I wish we could get rid of those little ding dings. I have to figure out how to do that. There is a way. I think I, so. I just forgot. I think to. if you go to participants. Okay. And I'll, to, I'll work on that. Yeah. It's in there. Okay. Well, um, how, do I have my camera on? I guess I do. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our second um, Renzuli Learning with Tony Kabusik. And um, Tony, I'm afraid I still didn't say that quite right. Oh, we are cool. so thrilled to have her with us today. And uh, you are muted upon entry, but please do chat uh, your questions because Tony is going to check on you every now and then to make sure that uh, everybody uh, is, is with her. And if you, if you need to ask a question, please do so right away, okay? Now, um, this is a, a grant funded project from the Great Plains Center uh, for Gifted Studies with uh, money from the research and grants um, at Emporia State University and the Catherine K. White Foundation. So Tony, I'm gonna turn it over to you and then we will look forward to hearing all about type two today. All right, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. I know it's an honor for me. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna review a little bit type ones and how that relates and flows to type twos. So right now um, I'm going to minimize. In fact, I'm gonna turn off my video just so I don't have a lag. And um, one of the things, whoops, did not want to do that. Um, the one thing that I wanted to go over a little bit is what is a type two? Um, think about what a type two is as we're going through some type ones. And I'm going to ask you um, to see if any of you are interested in developing um, your type ones that you see today into type twos. So type two, um, the type two is meant for students to develop the first thing is higher order thinking skills um, to be to work in on their own or in small groups to pursue a topic further. So think about this. And if I show you um, a type one, which is, let's say, the Statue of Liberty, and it's something you're really interested in. So what you're going to do as you um, for John with your type two, you're going to uh, create, you're going to use higher order thinking skills and discipline specific working skills, which means you're going to be doing research and you're going to be collecting data and information, paraphrasing, synthesizing, um, summarizing um, those types of skills. Um, also, um, this part, students should be looking at books. They should be uh, to, um, to develop uh, more information that they were interested on their type one, um, having interactive experiences and creating creativity, thinking, problem solving. So when I, um, I'm gonna demonstrate for you today some of the questions I ask when I show a type one, when I introduce the students to a type one, because you want them to critically think about that type one, um, especially since um, we're focusing on diversity um, and equity. We want students to think about their type one that is equitable to them um, and uh, how it relates to their cultural experience, et cetera. Not the way we see it, but the way they see it. And then a wide variety of specific learning skills. So they're going to learn how to do advanced research, how to use research material, how to, um, at this part, they should also be able to identify sites that are fact-based and how they determine their fact and not opinion. Um, and then finally, 
written oral and vis visual communication skills. So all of these are being developed and used in a type two situation on something that is of high interest to them. So any questions about type two? All right, so I'm going to, um, oh, did we have a question? All right, so let's look at some of these type ones. These are all taken from Renzulli Learning. And when we go back into Renzulli Learning, um, I'll show you where um, I found these, mostly in virtual field trips. So here's some virtual field trips. Um, let's say, for example, animals that you can see at the hippo pool. So I'm going to open that up. Um, L, look, it's night um, in Africa. I just watched this earlier in the day and it was daytime. So it must just now be night. So while they are watching, um, let's say, for example, this uh, live cam in, um, in Africa, uh, I'll show them that there are other videos that they can watch, um, live cams that they might be uh, more interested in. I'll ask the questions, you know, what do you think about when you see um, this scenario? What do you think of the environment? Um, what do you think about what we're doing to keep this environment safe and these animals safe? Um, do you think about droughts um, and what would happen to some of these animals um, uh, if there was a drought? Do you think about how people and natives that live there, um, how they interact um, with these animals? How about hunting laws? Uh, do you feel strongly about preserving these um, habitats and these animals and putting these animals on list where hunters from other countries can't go in um, and kill these, um, these animals uh, for hides and for sport. So as you're watching this, what does this mean to you? What do you immediately go to? Maybe you think of the African culture. You know, what is the African culture and how do the people live and how do they maintain their environments um, and why is that important to them? And is their environment integral to their, um, uh, to, their uh, to their beliefs and what, what they believe in? So those are the type of questions um, that I ask, whoops, sorry about that, um, as I'm showing a type one. So what's a student, once they see that, um, they can go into Renzulli Learning. And what do you think um, the first thing a student will do? For example, how about you? What did you think of um, as you were looking at the wildlife habitat in Africa. What were some of your thoughts? What were you thinking um, as you were looking at that? Uh, Jessica in the chat box says that it uh -huh. would be great, great for a habitat unit. It or, would. Or to learn about lions and how they live. Exactly, absolutely. So what would the type two entail? All right, you've watched the type one, I've introduced you to wildlife and habitats. What would be the next step for a student to do? I like this one, what types of grasses were growing there? How dry is it? How large is the water source? Oh, wow, absolutely. What other animals, whoops, that one, might I see? How do they adapt to the environment, the always changing environment, right? Um, I was just reading an article today, which kind of lends itself to this. Um, in Florida, there is an over, uh, overpopulation of coyote. And the coyote are adapting to the present environment, the building that's going on. 
And now they're becoming a menace to small animals and small children. Um, so those are things to think about. Those are great, great ideas. So after you have these questions, what, what can you do? What are some of the skills now that you will use to find, answer your questions? So I'm gonna go to my search engine and I can go and I can type in, maybe I wanna put in lions. I wanna find out more about the lions. And remember when I do a search, it's differentiated for me because the results match my profile. Um, dugout entrance, oh, look at this, a virtual tour. Um, here's some real field trips. Between lions, how to be a good dog. These are, um, oh, this is art. So maybe um, you're an artist and you wanna look at um, you want to look at the habitat through the eyes of an artist. Um, so notice that even though I'm looking for lions, it's bringing up art sites because it matches my profile. So now students are going to do exploration. They're going to view activities. They're going to take notes. Um, that's the beauty of um, when we do type threes, there's a place in uh, Renzulli Learning, where students can store all of their note taking and their note cards with citations right in folders. Um, but I tell kids that they can write in their journals, their Renzulli journal, um, all of the notes and the research that they've done. And then that way they can copy and paste it if they decide to go on to um, a type three. So type two is um, gathering in answering your questions. So um, if you wanna know more about habitats, if you wanna focus on that um, feature of that um, type one that you just saw, um, bird watching, live owl cams, I can, oh, India, land of the tiger. So I can go from Africa to India um, and I can find out some fun facts about um, India and their habitats. Whoops. My mouse is, is like having, doing its own thing today. Um, fisheries, maybe um, the student is more interested that their investigative work leads them away from Africa and maybe a um, Pacific Ocean habitat, you know, looking at underwater habitats. So that's the beauty of Renzulli learning is that once the students form their questions. And one of the things I do is as I'm showing them um, a, a type one, introducing them to a new topic, I'll ask them to write notes, you know, ask their questions, jot them down as they're watching the type one. Like um, your questions were amazing. You know, I love the one about the, the uh, adapting and the water, how large is their water source? Do they ever have droughts in Africa? You know, what is their rainy season? Maybe that student wants to focus on the rain aspect and how different rain cycles um, affects. Maybe you have one that's more proactive, like I said, that wants to concentrate on keeping these animals safe. Is there something that we as citizens of the United States or Italy or Spain, is there something that we can do um, globally together to protect the, um, these animals um, in, in, the, in wildlife? All right, so here's one, um, another type one. And this is your community. And this is, um, I loved when I did type ones with my kids, I loved introducing them to occupations. So here's one, a firefighter, a librarian, a mayor, a pediatrician, a pizza maker, a police officer, a utility worker. Every single one of these is a type one. So let's look at, um, Let's do the pizza maker. 
So this is a book, Start to Read. I work at a pizza parlor. My job is to make pizza. I work with lots of people. Each of us has an important job. It takes teamwork to run a restaurant. All right, so as you listen um, to this gentleman, what are some of your questions um, about a pizza maker? Teamwork, who else works um, with the pizza? What are the health regulations? Um, maybe I'm into the health and safety. Um, is there a way to make enough pizzas um, that you can donate pizzas to, um, the, the, uh, to the homeless? All right, so that would be, um, excuse me. So that would be the pizza maker. So let's see what else we have here. Let's go back. A pediatrician, a police officer, a utility worker. I work for utility company. We bring you electricity. Electricity travels along wires. We have to work on the wires to make sure electricity goes to all the homes and buildings that need it. Oh, I could think of many questions. Um, this one would be a great one because um, not only could you discuss the utility worker, but you how, is ele how does electricity work? How does the electricity go from home to home? Um, are wires underground or overground? Um, just a lot of different areas. What would be some of your um, questions for some of these occupations? Someone asked, what specific training do you need to make a pizza that was lean? Oh, I love that. What training do they... that? Do they go to school? Do they practice? Do they watch YouTube videos? <laughs> you know, how, that's a great, great question. Um, so <laughs> that would, that could be someone concentrating on the educational side um, of that. Also diversity, right? Um, is, is there pizza, is there, uh, uh, is there pizza uh, available to different areas like culturally, if there is an area of New York that is strictly um, Chinese that live there, um, or uh, or um, do they do they have pizzas? Do they have pizzas there? Does people of other cultures enjoy pizza? Um, do they make pizzas in Spain? Do they have pizza recipe uh, pizza places in Spain? Um, just some great, that's a great question. Um, can, can scholastic books read aloud in other languages? Connie, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. Let's see if there, um, I would imagine if you download the Google Ch Translator. Um, I downloaded the um, sign in or register. Hello, baby. The, the speech to text. And I know they have a um, they have a translator as well, but that's that is a great question. There's also um, Scholastic has a great area with videos um, that. Um, that you can show. It's the same, it's community helpers, but they're videos they interview. Um, and I'll show you that one when we get to um, Renzulli Learning. Veterinarian, um, this would be a great type one, right? Um, how many kids think of, of veterinarians, um, doctors for, um, for animals? And what is the schooling? That's a, you know another schooling question for veterinarians. Do they go? Um, for as long as real doctors. Um, real doctors, they have patients that can tell uh, the doctor where it hurts, what's ailing them, but animals don't have that luxury, right? So how do they read the signs? How do they figure out um, what, um, 
you know, how do they figure out what's wrong and hurting the animal uh, if they're sick or they broke a bone? Um, also, what's the difference between a veterinarian that lives in the city and lives in a rural community? Um, so what questions would you ask um, of this type one um, if I was to, to demonstrate this for you? Uh, someone asked the question when we were talking about pizza. Yes. Um, uh, this, let's see. She said, can uh, you could teach profit and loss? Oh. the business component. That, that's true. And think about this that since when you're thinking about diversity and equity, students are deciding on these type ones, what, what aspect interests them um, as far as, you know, uh, if I watch that pizza, I might immediately think, wow, what does it take to start your own business? Um, Joe, Dr. Joe Renzulli is big, big, big on how-to books, how to start a business how to start a pizza business. Um, students could research that, how-to books. If they can't find it on Renzulli, they can go to their library or they can go outside of Renzulli and maybe on YouTube um, would give them information um, on, on that topic. That was, that's a great, great um, thought. So as you can see, everyone comes up with a little bit different focus um, of of um whoops of these ideas animal movers all of these um baby pandas let's see oh presidents community club the the president what does the president do that might be a great one um to do as a type one too is to introduce um, even for the kids that do not live in the United States, maybe they're a little bit curious about um, our president and our government and the Senate and Congress. Um, here's another one. Um, I showed you this one um, last week. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Students can ask basic questions like, how did that get there? When did it get there? Who did they get the Statue of Liberty from? Um, they can tour Ellis Island. Uh, maybe they would be interested in immigration um, into the United States, how that happened. What countries did, um, did the most, what countries sent the most people or how many are how many uh, immigrants from other countries what was the highest country that had that um that immigrants left their country and came to america why did um why did they immigrate to the united states where did they go after they got here um what are some questions that you would ask um of this part either of the statue of liberty or um, Ellis Island. These are some pictures. You can go um, through pictures so the students can see um, what, how they dressed, what they looked like. Those, that's the hospital. How big was the hospital? Who did they treat? Did they send anybody back that was really sick? Let's see what questions you would ask. What kind of things did people experience on their journey to the US, to Ellis Island? Um, that I think, Jessica, I that's a great, now that's what I think I would focus on if I was doing a type three on this. I would focus on Im immigration and what were the differences between immigration back then and immigration now. Um, that would definitely, because that's so relevant. Plus that is um, so important 
um, in, in your uh, efforts of teaching um, equity and, um, and, and inclusion. That would really be a great, uh, great idea. And how people were treated versus treated now when entering the co country. That, oh, that is definitely, that's my questions. So if I wanted to take this to a type three, that is definitely what I would do. I would focus on then and now and find out um, how did the laws change along the way and why is it so complicated now? Um, is it because we are uh, a nation um, that is uh, stretching at the seams? Um, but those are all excellent questions. Or you could really get into the demographics, uh, how many children, what, what children came, what cultures came. Uh, Ab what, yes. Absolutely. Um, I, there's a great, in Renzulli Learning, there's a great assignment on, on Ellis Island I did with the teachers in New York. And um, one of the kids, that's what they focused on. They focused on children, um, the children and the age groups. And they did like a bar graph and did a really nice presentation. Um, they, took a, they took each time period and they noticed the trend that more and more children were coming um, alone as, the, as they went through the decades. Um, so you just never know when you show a type one, you just never know what is going to grab um, a, the student's um, attention and what they are going to be focused on and interested in. Um, I love old photography as well. So I may do research on the photographers um, that took all of these incredible pictures um, in Ellis Island and, and around that time period. Anyone else like to um, um, Connie just asked a great question. What um, what would you choose as a type one activity for your kids? What would you like to introduce your kids to um, on on uh, as a type one? And then finally, I just want to show you this one because it's my favorite. Um, this is the penguin cam. And um, I love, love, love that, um, whoops, I didn't want to share it. So let me go back to the video. Here we go. So right now the penguins seem to be um, sleeping. I see a lot of activity in the water, but I don't see a lot of activity um, where my mouse is right here where that white sand is. Usually that is just filled with um, penguins and they're jumping off these rocks and into the water. But maybe um, I'll ask the kids, why do you think the penguins are staying away? Maybe they think there's too many fish. Maybe there's some sharks in there. Looks like there might be, right? Um, but uh, let's get back to, oh, there's a penguin, there they are. Um, and again, this could just be, this may be um, a video that, or something that I introduced the kids to, that they have questions about zoos. Um, how are animals cared for? Are they safe in zoos? Is it natural for them to be in a zoo? Is it healthy for them to be in a zoo? Um, what happens if you take an animal out of a zoo and put, put them in a real life habitat? Um, that would be the kind of questions that some kids might ask. It, they might ask, how do you get a job at a zoo? Um, what, you have, what kind of education do you have to have to work in a zoo? I see a zookeeper right there walking by. Um, so again, as you can see, um, there will be multiple questions um, for, the, for the students. Um, we have some answers. Let's see. Animals are always a good choice. They like that and it's a good starting point. So very true. Um, we have, there are hundreds of um, live webcams in Renzulli Learning 
and you can just do a search and choose one that you think your kids will really enjoy. Is that a shark? I'm going to say yes. Um, I, I did see a couple of sharks. I don't know what the blue ones are. That might be something you could actually send a chat message to the San Diego Zoo and ask what kind of fish were in there. That would be fun, right? To get the kids involved. One topic I would like to see is storytelling. Oh, I'll show you some great sites for storytelling. Very cool. Um, I think it be, can be incorporated into literature, social studies, and can definitely tie into cultural traditions. Some I can't read because they're in, um, in there and I need a translator, right? Some stories begin in one country and travel through many countries like Cinderella. Oh, very true, very true. Um, I, I love that I created a project um, last year at Christmas, Christmas around the world. And it was just so interesting um, to, to, um, to read what kids were saying about their Santa Claus and um, how it, in every country he's called something different and traditions are so different than um, in the United States. Um, folk tales from different countries. Oh, so true. Um, and you can search folk tales in Renzulli Learning, and we'll do that when we get um, there. When we get back to Renzulli. So these are just a few of the um, type ones that I picked out. And again, that will lead to type twos, which is really our, um, our topic today. But I want you to think about when you watch a type one, how you automatically start developing this problem solving and um, specific work skills as far as asking those questions, thinking about, thinking about it critically um, uh, in, in what is relevant um, to you. And finally, it ends up with the written and the visual communication skills. Now, sometimes what happens is um, students, from a type one that you have shown, um, a student will gravitate and begin the type two process. Um, that's why I always ask kids, um, when you are, oh, the, the, I'm back at the penguins. I don't know how that happened. Whoops. When you are thinking about, um, when you are showing a type one, um, I want to make sure that kids are asking themselves questions and what is relative, relative and important to them. And then hopefully that will lead to a type two. Now, every type one will not, um, will not resonate with a student. So let's say, for example, um, I showed a type one and I had a couple of kids that just really didn't find anything interesting about that. But then again, they might on the next type one that I show. But I always tell kids that's important for them to look at that type one in their eyes and what it is important to them um, centering around that. And I think all of you really um, focused on that and gave great examples in the pizza, you know, from opening a business to what kind of education do you have to have? And I tell kids that you'll always have questions if you think about what I'm showing you. If you really think about it, you'll go, well, why this and, and why that? You know, kind of like when um, I did recycling. At first, everybody was like, oh, everybody knows about recycling. But then when they really started thinking about it, they were asking me questions like, do other countries recycle? How do they recycle? Do they have bins like we do? Um, so as you can see, um, it, you just never know how that's going to, to, to translate when you show a type one. The type twos, will generally come from their search engine. That is where they'll do their investigative work. Um, and that is where they will um, look for the data and information and um, have the questions answered that they're looking. So um, uh, let's just put in, um, I'm gonna just put in pizza. 
and see what I come up with here. Oh, the farming, the wheat. Never even thought of that, right? Where, where do they get their ingredients from? Um, agriculture in the classroom. Do you like to eat pizza? Let's make a trash pizza. That would be fun. Visiting the dentist. Because <laughs> to chew foods like crunchy apples and yummy pizza. So as you can see, who invented pizza? Okay, I'll, let's do go there. So as you can see, kids, there was an array of different avenues um, that they could go to. <clears throat> Have you ever wondered who invented pizza? How long has pizza been around? Where was the first pizzeria in the United States? Historians have different ideas. A lot depends on how you define pizza. Oh, this is very interesting. Very interesting. So as you can see, um, I'll tell kids that things they think they're not really interested in once they start looking around wheat comes from kansas you got it north dakota too um when you when they start looking around at the possibilities um it'll something will grab um their attention something will go wow i never thought of it that way they have wonder words take the wonder word challenge test your knowledge the first united states pizzeria was g lombardi's opened in 1905 in new york city on spring street it is still open today using its original oven although it has changed locations so what as what i'm going to do what do you think i'm going to do i want to know where it is now right so that's gonna lead me to a whole new, um, there we go. So now it is, it's, oh, it's still, it's, a, it's still on Spring Street, just a different, just a different building. All right, so that's something that I learned new today, right? Next time I go to New York City, I'll make sure that I that I visit that pizzeria. All right, any questions that you have on type one? Now I'm definitely hungry. I have to agree with you. Now remember, part of the type twos is also the note taking. So you want to make sure that students either Maybe they have a notebook if they want to, if you want them to keep all of their notes in a notebook, they can use the Renzulli journal. Once they start a type three, um, in the type threes, there is actually, whoops, there is actually an area called find and everything they do is saved here. Um, this is what I'll really be going into next Wednesday, but my notes, they can take notes, add a new note, and this, um, it was on a pizza type one, and um, I went to um, Wonderopolis, I'm going to write my notes. And I can even do um, create a citation. All right. And then I can add a new note. So all of my notes are saved in one area. If a student has not um, started a, a type three, then I would suggest if you want everything in Renzulli Learning, they can keep it in their journals. Um, if you would rather have a hard copy of it, they can do it hard copy. Are there any websites in Italian or books um, on the school-wide enrichment model? Um, yes, Connie, I sent you, um, gosh, it was a while ago, 
uh, all of the work that um, has been done in Italian with, um, oh, uh, Lauren and uh, Laura and uh, Dr. Sally Reese. Yes, um, I'll look for it again, but um, everything's been translated um, in Italian. Let's see if I can, um, I'll find that and I, I will send that um, along. As far as books, uh, one of the, uh, the Children's International Library has many books. Oops, let me go back. Um, let me go to the teacher site. I think I have it saved. It's the digital library. And I can actually choose the language. Whoops. I don't know where that, whoa, where that came from. Let me. Oh, that they're working on that. Um, the Children's International Library. We're gonna have to change the links. They've done some, some great work on the, um, on the library and I will get those new links in and I'll send them um, to you. But it's great. The Children's International Library, the digital library, they can actually choose. Um, let me see what's going on with that. There we go. We need to change our links. Um, but I can actually look for books in my language. Um, let's see. But there is a place that, um, book list, there we go. And then there's a, I believe, Mission, but we'll fix that and I'll send you, Connie, I'll make sure you have a link. But um, this is a great story. I have a little first grader um, when Renzuli first came out that was using, he was highly gifted kid. Um, his name's Sergio. And he actually taught himself how to speak Italian using the Children's International Library. Um, he would find books in Italian and uh, English and he would switch back and forth and he taught himself um, Italian. Oh, I'm sorry, Connie, I didn't see that, the second link, thank you. Here we go. And they also have, whoa, look at that. They also have children's books. Um, I just need to locate the links. They've changed all of their links and um, I need to change them or have our curators change them um, into, Renz um, into Renzuli Learning. Um, what's the title of the book on SEM? And if we can't find it, I'll have to send that to you. Um, I sent Connie, um, I downloaded it. I don't think I have it on my laptop. 
Um, but I will definitely find that for you and, um, and send that to you. But Lauren and, um, and Sally work together um, to translate um, the SEM material um, in, in Italian. And I will definitely find that. Um, any questions? And remember, um, you can always, oh, go ahead. I'm just saying, I don't see anything new in the chat box right now. Oh, okay. Thank you. But you can, um, you can actually, I saw a lot of comments about literature and um, you can find eBooks on Renzulli Learning. Uh, another a great search um, for um, is lit to go if you're looking for classic works of literature. One of the things that um, I want to tell you as well, if you have a site that you use for children's book, ebooks that are in Italian, you can submit it to Renzulli and we will add it to our database. So if you have websites that, um, uh, that you use in Italy, if you send them to us, we will definitely add them to Renzulli Learning. I'm not real sure. So here are, um, but if you send us any outside websites that you use, um, we will be more than happy to add them to Renzulli and you just click submit your resource. Um, I, I think before, uh, like before we meet next week, um, if you would uh, choose a type one of your choosing and, um, and then uh, after you've watched it, uh, your type one, jot down questions that you may have that you want to ask to further explore, and then go into your student site and start using your search engine to have that experience of a deeper dive and collecting data and information, as well as answering some of the questions um, that you had. I believe that... Um, Oh, great. Students begin type one activities this week, so we will share more next week. Oh, I'm anxious to hear. Um, I can't wait. And remember when you're demonstrating your type ones, whether it's a book, a piece of literature, a virtual field trip, a podcast, introducing them to a doctor, a lawyer, a pediatrician, um, demonstrate and model for them questions that they could be asking. Uh, maybe even the pizza, you know, maybe you wanna do the pizza guy um, and, and um, ask the great questions of your kids, your students that you asked me today. That would be a great modeling experience for them, um, for you to model the types of questions um, <laughs> that they that they can be asking themselves and what they want to know um, more about. Any other questions you might have about type twos? Do you understand? Does it make sense? The type one leading to the questions, leading to investigative work to answer those questions that you had watching the type one. Um, another one, um, I want to just show you if you're doing type ones this week, um, I want to show you this is one of my favorite um, type ones. And you may have um, seen this, it's turning the pages and it's the British Museum. 
but um, you could actually share with the kids books with your with your kids. For example, Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook. This is unbelievable. This is his actual book um, in the British Museum in his actual handwriting. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? And the students, they can listen to the text. Studies of weights and friction. Leonardo's first intention seems to have been to gather material for a treatise on mechanics. Even though his relentless curiosity soon led him to stray into numerous other topics, many of the pages of the notebook are concerned with his investigations of mechanics in general and the science of weights and movement in particular. Notes on weights, impetus, and movement. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And another great, um, another great type one is Mozart's music diary. Again, this is the actual book. Students will be able to witness Mozart's handwriting in uh, music. But they can go through, you can go through, this would be a fabulous, Fabulous type one. Um, I suggest it's called turning the pages. You can just type that in the teacher search engine and you can add it to your favorites. And then that way it will be easy for you to find when you go to do it. Um, Alice's Adventures Underground um, is here as well. There's a golf book, Audubon's Birds of America, 1827. The great thing about demonstrating some of these books is students investigating and asking questions about what was going on during that during that time period. You know, we're looking at birds, but what was what were people doing for a living? Um, where did most of the people live, et cetera? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Just gorgeous. So that would be um, a great way to um, start Renzulli is with turning the pages. Um, I wanted to make sure that you saw that. Um, and again, from the teacher's page is if you go to teach, go to search, which is your search engine and just type in turning the pages and clicking search and it will bring it up. All right, any other questions that you might have before we before we close? So we've done type one. I can't wait to hear about your type ones next week. In fact, we'll start off the session with your experiences um, to share with each other um, how your students reacted. Um, hopefully you have um, type twos, um, just think of it as answering questions they have on the type one. Uh, what questions that, that came up in their little, um, in their, um, in their minds uh, that was relatable to them. And I tell kids, you know, there is no wrong question because it's how you look at the topic, how you feel about the topic and what you want to know more about. So um, I think that's why Renzulli is so powerful because um, it is equitable. It is um, providing the students what they need when they need it in a format that they can, that they can do it. Um, I do have something to ask, um, Tony, and that is uh, last summer when we worked on this project, uh, Jeannie Pascon showed us um, some, some, uh, some of the uh, enrichment activity categories 
that maybe seemed more process oriented and perhaps seemed like you said that we would um, maybe be doing some research, you know, right. like on the, uh, so if, if you pull up, yeah, your enrichment activities, like creativity training, critical right. thinking, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? I know we just have a couple more minutes. I can, but then um, these are areas where students develop those skills, not particularly, not really, not really uh, from a, a, a reaction from type ones. In other words, when they're in their enrichment activities, there is no search engine. So if they go to creativity training, these are all activities that help develop creativity training. And these can be um, these can be type ones um, for the student, right? Um, this is letting them explore and them find um, them find their own type ones. So this is one on music. Meet a musician going to the studio. So the enrichment activities um, then them in themselves are not a type two but they are type ones um, and they develop the skills of creativity training, critical thinking and problem solving. Each one of these on the student site is a type one because uh, for example, um, exploring ratio, proportion and percentage. All of these help me to develop problem solving skills and all of these can be type ones, things that I, um, you know, I, I can be introduced to. The other thing is, is that they all match my profile. So they will be, um, they will be of interest to me. But these are not type twos. These are just, um, my enrichment activities is a place where students can develop critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. Um, it's a way for them to look at projects and independent studies that are aligned to their profiles. Um, how-to books. Um, this is a way for students to go into how-to books um, to know uh, my very first little German book, When Mother Lets Us Cook. Um, so again, all of these enrichment activities are number one, they're type ones because they're introducing the students to topics. And the second thing is, is depending on the genre that they're in, they are developing those skills. But they're really not, there's no way. So in other words, if you showed, uh, let's say turning the pages and you showed them Leonardo da Vinci sketchbook and they wanna know more, they had questions um, my enrichment activities, there's no way you search the, the, the enrichment activities by going to search. Now, what I can do is I can go to advanced search and I can look at creativity training and I can look at, um, let's say, how to books and I can type in pizza. Now I'm looking for, as a student, I am looking for the topic that you introduced me to. And there's one creativity book and look at that three how-to books. How to be a chef, an entrepreneur, so um, yes, the enrichment activities is an area for students to um, develop skills in critical thinking, creativity, training, and problem solving. It's also a place for them to find type ones on their own. Hopefully, Connie, that answered your question. Uh, it really does. You know, it helps clarify. It's really exciting to think that those can be type ones. So in other words, when we do when we, you know, next, this week, we're working on type ones, those that are working with students, not everyone will be working with students, but they might want to do a type one um, on their own, you know, without a student. So we'll be interested in hearing what people have done 
um, this week uh, with type ones. Now, after we do a type one, then we start asking like the W words, like who, what, where, when, how and why, and things like that about what, what we observed. You, you know, you asked all those leading questions from the type one sites, uh, or the sites that you introduced yes. us to. So then we just start probing a little bit more and that creates the type two. Would that and be a fair, fairly correct understanding? Okay. And you might want to model for them um, how I went in and I searched pizza. So you mm -hmm. want to maybe, maybe model for them like, wow, you know, let me see what I can find about pizza on my own. Um, if, uh, if you ask the question, I like the education, I thought that was an excellent question. Um, you might want to um, search and you may not find this answer in Renzulli. Maybe the student has to go outside of Renzulli learning, but what education, um, what training does pizza, um, good pizza makers have? So um, I just feel that when I model for my uh, grandkids and when I was teaching that I had a much better success rate of them being able to go on their own and do on their own. Well, I think we have maybe just, if you have just a moment, it looks like we, uh, Joyce, I, I think there's a, a question. I'll go ahead and ask it. Okay. I know that Tony um, needs to move, um, do other things and it's been so interesting. Um, so would, could we consider, you know, type one is an introduction. It's, it's learning about something. Um, so then would we think of type two as this is where came from Martina, uh, more of a, a, a deepening, like we talk about white, deeper, wider, you know, right. maybe even faster. Right. Um, would that be a good way to think of it? It is. It is. Um, think of yourself. Think of you watching um, a documentary on TV. And the documentary is on World War II. I know myself, the first thing I usually do is I get on my iPhone and I start Googling. And because I have questions, I want to find out more. That's the type two. That, okay. iPhone's, my, that iPhone's my type two. That's I a great know. example. I, I can, we can relate to that. Yep. Um, and that's, watch. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, there's, and historical there's, fiction, even if I watch a fiction show, um, and it's in a time period that I really don't know a lot about, I'm getting out my phone and Googling. And okay. that is a type two. Hey, so we do this naturally, don't we? We do. Um, and now also, um, there was another question. I think it's a really important one. Uh, and then we, we'll need to close. But, but um, Martina, Joyce, and I will stay on the call for anyone who, who wants to stay. And Martina may want to do some translation. Um, so when we, for those who are working with students, for the teachers who have students, uh, the question was, who decides uh, the type one activity? Is it the teacher or the student? Great question, right? That is a great question. I, there's two ways to do that. Um, when I do, when I used, I used to do a type one with my kids once a week. And I did it on the day they went to the library, to the media center, because I figured those kids that they were interested or had questions about something. I'll give you a great example. Preparing a mummy for burial. I showed that to my kids, first graders. They had to pull the brains out and, you know, they had to put them in canopy jars. The kids loved it. Well, when, what do you think they wanted when they went to the library? They wanted books on mummies. They wanted books on pyramids. They wanted books on Egypt, Egyptians. So um, that's how you think about it now and then the next week maybe I did a space uh type one like something in space so when they went to the library they were looking for books on space students have availability to type ones every time they log into Renzulli learning by going to their enrichment activities I saw a great question um the enrichment activities based on their profile yes every one of those activities 
came from the results of their profile. So every time a student goes into their enrichment activities, they can do their own type ones. When I did type ones as a whole group, I chose, um, I chose the activity for them. Okay, that's a good distinction. I think in our study, what we really want, I mean, it's good to know you always have options. In our study, I think that we want those who are working with students and who have the consent forms returned, that's very important. Since this is a study, we need to have the consent forms from the parents signed and returned as well as signed by the student. So when uh, those are returned, then um, the student will be taking the profiler. We will put the student in the, we will register the student in the Renzulli learning system. And it, it's very fast. So once we have the student name, who's uh, returned the form, we will put them in the Renzulli system. And the first thing that, that the teacher and student should do is take the profiler. So when the student um, does the profiler, then all thousands, I mean, there will be so many that it will be, it will, um, you have far more like a smorgasbord, there's far too much. You, know, uh -huh. you have to narrow it down and decide what's, really most interesting. So we we would like the student to choose. Okay, I, um, if the student needs help choosing, of course, the teacher will help, but the teacher should help the student based on the student profiler. So if it's a fourth grade student, then um, the activities will, we, we register the student as a fourth grade student. And so the activities are at that level. And you know, that's. I'll, I'll go ahead and ask one last question. So, when we put um, fourth grade or sixth grade or whatever grade in, would that be the regular education? And then we might think about um, whatever sites come up. If it's a gifted student, that um, maybe the student would want more advanced sites. Or do you think that it it um, is so so? There's so many choices that it isn't really relevant. That's a good question, yes. Um, Renzulli goes up a grade and down a grade. So if I'm in third grade, I'm seeing from I'm seeing third, fourth, and fifth grade sites. Um, there is a way for students to be able to search all of Renzulli learning. And um, if they are getting things that they want more advanced, they can do that through their search engine. And if they do an advanced search, they can look for material all the way to high school. Okay, that is very awesome. So it's always uh, like a margin of error, up, up one up and down one, great. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay yes. Tony, um, we're giving you, I don't know, maybe everybody can um, do a reaction here, uh, like, a, like an applause or something uh, for Tony because we need to let her go. Um, and Tony will excuse you at this time. And All thank right. you. We will look forward to type ones. We'll share those with you next week and you'll talk uh, more about type two and uh, introduce the type yeah, three right. as well. And right? type three, guys, is the Pierce de Resistance of Dr. Tony's <laughs> work. So okay. thank you all very much. I enjoyed every second. And if you need anything, Connie, um, let me know. If you want to send them that PowerPoint that they can use um, for their own students, that you can do that as well. Okay, thanks so much, Tony. We'll see you next week. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen before I go out. There you go. Okay, and uh, so if you're Italian and you wanna stay on the call, um, Martina can, um, can share more, right, Martina? Yes. And maybe. ask questions in Italian yeah. at this point. Yeah. So if you... Uh, are not speaking Italian and want to learn the language, then this is a good time to stay. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you. Um, we know, you know, we really would like you to, to go ahead and ask those questions all through the presentation. And Martina, if you would just <laughs> chat them immediately in English, immediately, so we don't have to wait. Because we all, I know this group by now, and they ask such amazing questions. And we don't, and everyone would like to hear those. Okay. So I'm going to uh, go back to mute.
And uh, Martina, we'll, we'll just give you the floor. Ma can I ask a question for, before Martina starts? Yeah, sure. Uh, Martina, will you, will you give the English what the questions are right today as you are? I know Connie said tech, uh, put the chat box, but today, right now, are you gonna let us know what they're asking? I would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. So, se avete domande che possono riguardare sia l'attività di tipo 2, sia cose più tecniche, più pratiche, questo è il momento per, per chiarire, insomma, perché so che mi arrivano WhatsApp, mail, sì, sì. eccetera, quindi <ride> approfittate. Sì, perché io ho, ho due alunni, no? Come ben sai, la mia ragazza più, l'altro ragazzo che tu mi hai affiato che scalpitano per iniziare. Okay. E quindi, insomma, volevano appunto sapere quando, quando abbiamo il prossimo incontro e, e come, insomma... Co questo te lo chiedo io ovviamente come Connie, yeah. sì, io tradu traduco per, la, per le prof. Connie and uh, Joyce, uh, uh, their, um, her students um, are looking forward to start to use Rensuli Learning System. So when they, they will receive the credentials to enter. Okay. Um Uh, Alessandra, have you um, returned your consent form? Ciao. Uh, to to um, Martina, have you, has she returned it? Then mm -hmm. Martina needs to send us the names. So Martina will send the names to Sandra uh, or myself. And if you send them now, they'll be in today or tonight. <laughs> For you. <laughs> Only name, Connie, or I need, we need the first, we need the first and last name and grade level and gender for every student. Is it not necessary the email? No. No. We do not, okay. No, we, 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 we will give them a username and password that will use your email, Martina. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they do not, we are not going to ask for student emails. Okay. We want to protect the students. Ok, allora è necessario che eh, io invia alla professoressa Conni e alla nostra assistente Sandra il nome e il cognome degli studenti, quindi spero che sia scritto in modo chiaro nel consenso che io possa decifrare e dopodiché eh, vi daremo le credenziali, username e password, ve li daremo e possono iniziare fin da subito, quindi devo fare questo passaggio io e, e lo farò quindi volendo possiamo iniziare domani è così yeah. uh, eh. sì. e Connie sì. when, when they have the username eh. and password do uh, they start tomorrow as long as uh, we have the consents they can start uh, as soon as you have the login yes yes sì. <laughs> Scusa, io ho una domanda. Se le, creden le credenziali arrivano a noi e noi dobbiamo darle ai bambini? Ok. Connie, who uh, received the credentials? I or teachers or, or who? We will um, we'll probably send them to you, but um, if, if we have, like if I have Alessandra's or uh, Roberta or Anna, if, I, if, if we have their emails, Um, we can also just send them directly, but it's going to be very simple. It'll be a very simple login, uh, the registration, but they need to be in the system. You so know, we will yeah. send to teachers the credentials. Uh, okay, teachers need the, okay, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing, but we need consent, consent forms returned from the teacher before mm -hmm. they work with the student. Okay. So the first the teacher sends returns the consent form. Mm -hmm. And 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 the teacher um, I mean they can send them all at once if they want the the teacher and student but they should send theirs as soon as possible and do the pretest. And the students should also do the pretest. So first thing is consent, second thing are pretests and they're in Italian. And so those are a link, you know, a Google form link. So that's immediate. You can do that 
whenever you want, you know, and, um, and then, uh, and then Martina sends us, uh, or, um, you know, we just need to have, know that the consent form is in, and then um, Martina will give us the, your, your student names, and then we send them to Renzuli. It, it'll happen pretty fast. They're very mm -hmm. fast about it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Martina? Ma Martina, il fatto che tu hai già ricevuto i consensi, giusto? Mi hai dato anche conferma. Sì, certo. E, ho fatto, io ho fatto anche tutti i test, ho compilato tutto, eh, pre, pre test, quello sulle tecnologie, gli ho, ho inviato i link ai ragazzi, qualcuno mi ha già scritto che ha risposto a tutto, però volevo sapere se arrivano direttamente ai ragazzi, è un conto, altrimenti io devo inviarle le via mail perché io ho già appuntamento domani alle 7 per, le, per, per iniziare. Ma farai il primo incontro? Eh sì, quello in cui spiego come entrare, come cosa fare, come funziona, dove andare a vedere. Solo che a me mancava questa parte, perché da quello che ho capito prima, um, l'attività la devo preparare io, mi sembra di aver capito. Invece avevo capito che Secondo il proprio sono stata io a fare quella domanda. Secondo il risultato del profiler, poi i ragazzi trovavano le loro aree di, uh, di forza, insomma, i loro interessi e potevano andare in my enrichment e andare a, a scegliersi loro un'attività che poi dopo dovevano approfondire e sulla quale alla fine preparare un prodotto, giusto? Esatto, è proprio così. Ah, okay, perfect. Quindi iniziamo con un'esplorazione, è così? Esatto. Perché loro sì. chiaramente devono prendere confidenza con questo, diciamo, strumento. Quindi iniziare a conoscerlo, come abbiamo fatto noi. Esatto. Poi, diciamo, le prossime volte che ci incontriamo abbiamo l'opportunità di... Eh, quindi, mh, come dire, partiremo ovviamente dal, dal loro profilo e da, da un loro interesse, che riguarda però sempre uno dei tre argomenti. Equità, eh, eccetera. Inclusione e diversità. Uh, ok, va bene, va bene. Quindi è il prodotto finale mm -hmm. è, è liberamente scelto oppure dobbiamo dare nuove indicazioni? Cioè quello che verrà, diciamo, che concluderà uh, diciamo, questo lavoro per, per i ragazzi. Come facciamo? Dobbiamo dare in delle... Alessandra asks for the type 3 product. If, if the students can choose or maybe teacher, test guide, students we'll, we'll start one at a time okay so we start with um, um, type one so we're, we're going to build like a pyramid you know we'll build only it'd be like a pyramid upside down <laughs> <laughs> <ride> no, è che, allora no, spiego ho questi ragazzi che ripeto no? forse perché con, sono più grandi forse con i ragazzi più grandi è più, è più semplice non lo so però ripeto credo che vadano anche abbastanza veloci a quello che ho inteso però vediamo un po' insomma comunque siamo qui per confrontarci e, e niente, vabbè, poi ci darete indicazioni, va bene, va bene così. Iniziamo così, insomma, le prime, le prime volte per, per esplorare, per conoscere questo. Uh -huh. uh, sì, ok, va benissimo. Ok. Ok, Roberta, fai pure qui la domanda. Eh, sì, eh, scusate, io credo no. di essere capitata nel gruppo sbagliato, nel senso sì. che... Ho Hai sbagliato in... formazione? Sì, nel senso che mi sembra che questo sia una sorta di secondo livello rispetto, eh, io sono, mi sto accingendo adesso a capire di cosa stiamo parlando, quindi quando parlate di compiti o altro io vado un attimino in crisi, quindi temo di essere io nel posto sbagliato. No. Che... <ride> nel senso io proprio sto facendo un corso sul, eh, sui ragazzini plus dotati e mi è stato parlato, tra, mi è arrivata tramite scuola questo invito, ma mi sembra che voi siete molto più avanti rispetto no. a me. 
eh, no, no, perché non, non capisco neanche di cosa stiamo parlando al punto che io sono un insente di scuola elementare ho finito la quinta quindi ho anche difficoltà a capire cosa intendiamo per far fare dei compiti ai ragazzini in questo momento quindi vi chiedo io scuola elementare ok io. aiutatemi allora se non io. sono fuori del gruppo sbagliato sono con, in questo momento con il cervello sbagliato perché aspetta che traduco la Conny no, forse Conny. non ha fatto la formazione di nove ore la collega Roberta. bravissima bravissima sono proprio eh, allora era quella eh. è quella che ti spiega sai ok quindi non sto proprio capendo per quello che ho detto magari devo fare due passi indietro perché sono stata buttata in questo corso e rischierei di farvi perdere del tempo e anche io mi sento no, comunque indietro. era un prerequisito fare la formazione delle nove ore eh, cioè, che proprio... dice, mi sono persa proprio questo quindi vi chiedo eh. un perdono no Scusate. non ti preoccupare se riesci a fare quella formazione è tutta online e in modalità okay. sincrona quindi ti suggeriamo di farla in inglese ma okay. puoi aiutarti con il google traduttore e quindi okay. con le, le Roberta le... sì No, no, le informazioni solo per fare le nove ore e ovviamente questa sorta di corso ce ne sarà un altro, sarà da fare successivamente perché se no non riesco a fare le due cose insieme, a meno che non faccia una full immersion domani. È un prerequisito però le nove ore. Eh no, sono d'accordo, per quello che ti dico, eh, difficilmente riesco a farla per il prossimo appuntamento che è il... Mm -hmm. Adesso guardo l'appuntamento, se si può fare io domani faccio... Dopo domani. Eh... Posso farla anche domani, però rischierei in questo momento di farvi perdere del tempo. Vedo mm -hmm. Ma Emanu che sorride e mi dà l'ok, okay, mi dice se la pensa come me esattamente. Quindi eh, eh, tra due eh, ci abbiamo, no. messo, ci abbiamo eh. messo un po' più di nove ore. Infatti, quello Traduco che alle professoresse. Che devo umilmente perdono io per il disturbo che vi sto recando. No, ma scherzi, Connie and Joyce. Eh, Roberta eh, feels a little bit wrong in this group because she uh, doesn't understand the, the enrichment activities. So maybe she feels like wrong in our group now, but we suggest her to, to uh, attend to uh, online course on Rensuli learning system online, the nine hours. And she, she didn't attend that course. And so maybe that course could help her to better understand because she, she starts uh, now to study gifted education in another course. So she feels like disoriented now. Oh, But, uh, yeah. Okay, I have something to say to that. And I, I think Joyce, um, You know, Joyce introduced me to this so long ago, Joyce, and, <laughs> and it has, and I still love it, Joyce. I mean, it was such a good thing. Um, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> you know, my students don't know, like, they don't know what you know already. Um, you know, for instance, Lucia already knows more about um Renzuli than a lot of my students. Now I am teaching them and I will share this lecture with them. But because you know something about gifted does not mean that you know a lot. Joyce, am I right about this? It doesn't mean that you're, you're going to learn so much more. You, I know that you are going to Talent Point and other um, gifted uh, lectures and that's excellent. But you will not, you, this is a, um, this is a type three. <laughs> You're going to, this right now you have type one, but you do the training and you will have type three for yourself. Okay. So uh, when you're done, you, you will know so much more than you do now. So do not feel, Roberta, please um, do not feel out of place because um, everyone feels that way. Uh, It's, it's not that it's Italian or English or anything else. Um, my students feel the same way. Ok, la professoressa Conny dice che lei è professoressa in Poria State University e si occupa della formazione 
eh, degli insegnanti all'università e lei tiene il corso di eh, gifted education e lei dice che anche i suoi studenti non sanno, cioè stanno iniziando a studiare la gifted education. Quindi eh, dice non, non vi preoccupate perché questo corso è fatto apposta per, per imparare insieme, stanno, stiamo esplorando insieme questo settore e dice Roberta ha detto non, non ti sentire fu, fuori luogo eh, perché ci sono anche studenti della professoressa Phelps che, eh, che sono al tuo stesso punto, quindi non ti preoccupare, eh, sei la benvenuta in questo corso. Eh, e comunque puoi, puoi andare avanti. Eh, per, trovare il livello, per trovare la formazione delle nove ore, tu hai scritto qui il livello 1, penso che sia, tu intenda quella sì. delle nove ore. Sì, l'ho messa tra virgolette per far capire. Ok, e se tu fai una ricerca di tutte le mail che hai ricevuto da parte mia... No, non ho sentito trovare. niente. Se, se faccio una ricerca... E, ehm, delle mail che ti ho mandato sì, eh, sì, dovresti sì, proprio trovare tempo. il link tu sei sulla nostra classroom? Eh, non credo proprio ok All allora ti abbiamo mandato l'invito per la classroom sì. se riesci ad accedere perché comunque lì è un archivio e stiamo okay. comunque eventualmente se mi mandi una mail mi fai un promemoria io ti, ti mando esattamente il link della formazione Perfetto, Bene. grazie davvero, scusate se ho rubato il vostro tempo, eh, davvero. Grazie. grazie mille per la disponibilità e la comprensione. Thank you, Connie. Prego. Understanding. <laughs> Posso so, fare? We, we, all, we all start, we all start at the beginning, all of us. And I'm still learning. I think, Joyce, are you still learning too? <laughs> we all Thank learn. You. Thank you so much. Mm. Avrei delle domande. Ah. Sì, arrivo Emanuela. Dice la professoressa che tutti noi stiamo imparando, anche lei dice che sta imparando, anche la professoressa Miller, anch'io stiamo tutti imparando, quindi non vi sentite fuori luogo assolutamente. Passiamo a Emanuela, di Emanuela. Sì, intanto ringrazio per la pazienza che avete con <ride> tutte le domande. E, avrei tre domande. Allora, la prima mi sfugge in che modo i bambini possono, anzi devono, selezionare tra le attività di arricchimento, eh, a prescindere dal fatto che partono no, dal profilo, eh, rispetto al vincolo dell'educazione dell civica, cioè ai temi dell'equità, della diversità e dell'inclusione perché se ho ben capito loro si trovano di fronte a no? una serie di attività di arricchimento che gli vengono in automatico fornite sulla base del profilo, a quel punto, visto che sono anche così ricche, in che modo riescono a selezionarle o vengono offerte già selezionate secondo questo tema? Questa è una prima domanda. Vado anche con le altre? Sì, sì, vai. La seconda domanda è... Ah, sì, Emanuele, aspetta, è meglio che facciamo una alla volta. Ok. Connie, the first question of Emanuela is in which way a student have to select enrichment activities respect on the, uh, our topic, so diversity, equity and inclusion? So, because maybe some of them are curious to know something that is not inside our topic, so. Well, but maybe um, that might be true, um, Emmanuel, that, that may be true, but also um, it may be that, maybe take a look at it anyway. If the student is interested in it, maybe look at it anyway. And then um, maybe start uh, you as the teacher, start asking some questions and maybe say, you know, um, what, that, what might that be like for somebody from another place or another age or another, you know, in other words, ask questions that might, might evoke some curiosity 
about beyond like I, I have this with this little thing here, expand it more. And it could even work into a type two. So I would, there's so many choices. I wouldn't say, um, don't, I would not say no. I, I would not just say no, but I would, I would um, enlarge it as much as possible toward the topic. Yeah, thank you, Pony. Allora, la professoressa dice che innanzitutto se loro hanno qualche particolare curiosità o interesse si può proprio partire da quello. Quindi loro possono iniziare dal loro interesse, però dopo il nostro ruolo, il ruolo dell'insegnante, è quello di guidarli un po'. Quindi qualsiasi interesse che loro eh, possano dimostrarci sta a noi poi fare delle domande per portarli al, al discorso eh, della, della diversità, equità. Per esempio, no, abbiamo visto oggi la pizza. Ecco, se qualcuno è appassionato della pizza, <ride> che noi siamo... <ride> In Italia, noi, we love pizza. <laughs> so we all love pizza. And there, I was, when she asked what country, does Spain have pizza? Everyone has pizza. <laughs> Show me some place that does not have pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dubbio, il mio dubbio sta nel fatto che però dopo il primo incontro in cui noi spieghiamo eh, come devono muoversi e cosa è il loro richiesto, poi passano alcuni giorni in cui loro fanno questa attività di esplorazione in autonomia, quindi non uh -huh. ci siamo, non, non siamo noi lì presenti con loro per guidarli e in base a questo, cioè e questo io ho immaginato, no? che nel primo incontro io farò presente che loro devono muoversi sulla base di questo argomento. Io però ho un gruppo di 11-12 anni, quindi temo che possano perdersi all'interno, perché anch'io, io stessa ho fatto fatica quando ho fatto le mie sperimentazioni. Eh, ma fa, proprio, fa proprio parte dell'attività di tipo 1, l'esplorazione, no? Quindi possono perdersi quanto vogliono, è importante che poi al secondo incontro vi dicano un po' quello che hanno visto. Mm. Però voglio dire, voglio dire Martina, noi come facciamo a guidarli se lì loro sono da soli? Ok. How uh, teachers can guide students if they are alone when in, in the, in the, during the week? So they start with the first meeting, teacher um, teach them their insulin learning system and how to explore it and so on. But when they are alone, Uh, do the students explore independently or they have to follow the teacher's question? The, yeah. The, there'll be uh, uh, two, two, two meetings a week. There'll be um, a presentation meeting and then a, mm -hmm. um, there'll, there'll be a, uh, like a teaching meeting and then a learning meeting. In other words, the teacher... Um, helps the student know what to do. And then when, when you come back for the second meeting, then the student talks about what they did. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, the teacher can email the student and say, how are you? Um, how's it going? Do you have questions? And you know, like maybe um, you start tomorrow, Thursday, and um, and you meet together and say, you know, introduce everything. And then the student goes home, this, well, the student does go home, the students are already home. <laughs> But they work until the next meeting and the teacher can email them or chat them and say, how's it going? What questions do you have? And then when you have the second meeting, then, you, then the student shares what they did. Okay. Does that yeah. help? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sì, il primo meeting, il primo incontro, quindi voi insegnanti fate un po' la parte introduttiva. Poi tra il primo incontro e il secondo incontro voi ogni tanto potete mantenere i contatti, quindi scrivere delle mail oppure scrivere dei messaggi, eh, ecco, insomma tenervi in contatto con gli studenti e chiedere a loro se hanno delle domande, cosa stanno 
eh, cosa stanno esplorando, cosa hanno visto, insomma potete continuare a guidarli anche a distanza, però ov ovviamente c'è cioè, l'attività di tipo 1, sarà comunque un'attività un esplorativa, ecco, e, e quindi poi al secondo meeting, al secondo incontro, gli studenti vi diranno eh, cosa hanno cercato, perché hanno cercato, ok? E soprattutto quali sono le loro domande, cosa vorrebbero approfondire. E poi sta a voi, insomma, guidarli un po' per portarli, per fare dei collegamenti, come dicevamo appunto sulla pizza. Loro possono scegliere in realtà qualsiasi cosa, però con qualsiasi cosa si possono fare dei collegamenti sul tema dell'equità, della diversità e dell'inclusione, veramente su qualsiasi cosa. Eh. Ok. E sta a noi, insomma. Sì. Le altre due domande? Allora, una, sì, ho l'elenco, una, eh, per, eh, per il secondo incontro, eh, l'incontro in cui poi ci si vede e i ragazzini verbalizzano e riferiscono, devono in qualche modo lasciare una traccia al di là delle note che possono fare nel diario delle loro esplorazioni oppure no cioè deve, può essere un lavoro esclusivamente eh, cioè che, no, che non viene documentato poi in nessun modo scritto yeah. Connie and Joyce for, uh, for the second meeting Do uh, the students have to write in something or is it, is it enough the video recording to document our work? Either, either we need a video recording if they, um, if they want to have something in writing because they like to write, they can journal uh, on Renzuli like she showed us how to journal. And um, I, I, I the teacher can decide, but we need a video, okay? Ok, noi abbiamo bisogno del video e l'insegnante può decidere, cioè più che altro è una cosa un po' così, nel senso che se allo studente, al bambino piace scrivere, può utilizzare il diario journal, il diario nel, nella piattaforma e scrivere. Però potete scegliere a voi, diciamo che... Per noi, per documentare, è sufficiente la videoregistrazione dell'incontro. Sì, lo pensavo perché più che altro ho immaginato che ci potrebbe essere il rischio che aprano mille finestre in maniera inconcludente. Quindi ho pensato magari invece se, se prendono come degli appunti magari possono anche in qualche modo ricostruire in questo senso perché temo possano un po' perdersi e la mia ultima domanda invece magari sarà banale l'incontro questo secondo incontro tutti gli incontri che facciamo col gruppo lo dobbiamo organizzare noi su una piattaforma cioè che scegliamo liberamente noi e quindi poi nel secondo incontro dobbiamo provvedere noi ad attivare la registrazione giusto? Okay. Which, yeah. Uh, which uh, platform uh, teachers can use, maybe Zoom or Meet, maybe they, they can decide. They can decide. Voi potete decidere su quale piattaforma fare gli incontri. And, e vedo Chiara che scrive in chat. Chiara uh, wrote on the chat, la registrazione deve essere della ricerca fatta a video dai bambini. No, no, durante proprio la registrazione del secondo incontro. Ok, quindi eh, mi raccomando, quindi, che, perché commit, commit non sempre registra, eh. Meet non sempre, ad, provate a vedere, però fino a poco tempo fa io commit non riuscivo a registrare, quindi fate una prova. Scusami Martina, quindi noi registriamo, quindi non domani, il secondo incontro, lo registriamo tutto e dopodiché sì. niente lo teniamo poi lo dovete inviare a noi ah, okay. inviatelo a me quindi il secondo incontro che per me domani sarebbe il secondo ma in realtà è il primo perché domani eh, io li ho incontrati informalmente ok eh, così c'è stato un incontro giusto perché avevo già dato appuntamento e quindi sì va bene va bene quindi, diciamo che il primo incontro ufficiale dovrebbe essere domani è così sì. 
Sì, e sì, sì, certo. Al secondo incontro, quindi da se, non da domani, ma dal, dal prossimo, dal secondo, diciamo, sì. dal terzo per me, registro. È così? Sì, esattamente. Okay. Yeah. E lo inviamo a te, Martina, dicevi? Sì. Connie, do they send to me or to you the video recording of second meeting? Is it, is it possible they can turn it into Google Classroom? But maybe, yeah. Is that possible? If they lo can potete mettere, it... sì, mm -hmm. lo potete mettere su Google Classroom, dice la prof, ah. il video. Lo potete mettere su Google Classroom, sarebbe would, fantastico. Would that work? Ok. Funziona? Cioè, va bene? Sì. Sì? That, yes. that, that would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ok, va bene, ok. Ci proverò. È okay. semplice. Sì, yeah. dice la prof che è semplice. Va bene. Yeah. Ok. So we just have to set that up, Martina. We have to set up a, an assignment so that they can upload the video, the MP4, into Google Classroom. Yes, please. So it's it's, it's not shared by everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's so stay only between you and uh, yeah, it and is me. stay it stay right. It'll stay right there. Yes, and it'll be, yes thank um, you. I Martina was just Joyce. wondering about this. No, no. Uh, YouTube is open, but not the Google Classroom. On, only you and me, <laughs> Sandra and Joyce. <laughs> And oh, sorry, the, the YouTube channel is open to everyone, it, or it's a closed you, group? Um, it's, it's open to everyone, but we can close it. Would you like okay. us to close the Italian part? To, to, no, um, because um, um, it's my, headmaster, my headmaster asked me uh, where, uh, where this video are supposed to go. <laughs> um, And so uh, oh, I, I told him that we are in a, in a safe place, a Google yes. Classroom, and yeah. even the yeah. channel uh, was safe. Um, the, and the, I, the... I suppose that you need uh, to, to, sh to share the videos. And it's... Um, so no, no, I do not need to share the videos. Ah, no? You okay, know. so not, if I have any problems, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the student, the student videos are not shared. Just, just in the classroom, they do not go to YouTube. Oh, okay. Now, okay. the students, if they want to, they that's part of the form. If they want to do a showcase at the end, they can do a special video. But the ones that you do, no, those go in Google Classroom only. Okay, we do okay, not thank share. You. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's a that's important. E, e Good video i video che poi ci darete, che metterete su Classroom, sono al sicuro, nel senso non li metteremo, non li useremo. Connie, I have a question for you. Would you like that I uh, remove some teachers from Google Classroom that don't participate? Mm -hmm. I think that because it's more safe, so if, if they don't participate and I fear that they look only the videos and yeah i think um we can uh, we we can take them out and if they decide to participate then we can add them back in but also i'm not sure um we'll have to check and see like uh like roberta may not be able to see lucia's vi videos you know if they're uploaded in i don't know that okay. everyone can see those okay. i think just just the teacher just martina Mm -hmm. Martina and I and Sandra and Joyce, we can see the videos, but I don't think everyone can, we can check that, but okay. I don't think everyone sees everyone's videos. They shouldn't. Mm -hmm. okay. They should be yeah. private. Yeah, thank you. Si dice la prof che quando voi caricate un video lo vediamo solo noi insegnanti, e quindi io, la Connie, Sandra e la prof eh, Joyce. E però dovrebbe essere al sicuro, ecco, perché ci sono tanti insegnanti che non hanno attivato Classroom e non stanno partecipando in nessun modo. And maybe, Connie, if, if they don't uh, sign the consent, 
uh, if they don't uh, complete the questionnaire, the, the pretest, so we could remove them from Google Classroom. Um, I think, right, I think, um, I think we're, we, we can do that um, anytime now. Yeah, and if we make a mistake, and mm -hmm. someone is supposed to be in there, then we put them back in. Yeah. Allora dice la prof che possiamo togliere, rimuoveremo quei docenti, quegli insegnanti che non, non hanno restituito il consenso e firmato e che non hanno fatto i questionari, perché questa formazione è finanziata da Emporia State University e, ed è giusto insomma, che, che ci sia una collaborazione reciproca. Ok. Martina, i miei bambini hanno, entro domani dovrebbero restituire, insomma, completare mm -hmm. i prequestionari. Ok. Emanuela, um, I have, uh, no one, no one sees the videos, just no one else sees okay. the videos. I do not have to share these with anyone. If they stay in Google Classroom and we do not share them with anyone. Ok, noi con, non condivideremo con nessuno i video, quelli che ci mandate. Mi sono perso in Manuela. Io non ho avuto con Come? Eh, ah sì, eh, sì. ok, no niente, vai, eh, dimmi no, Alessandra. Sì. Scusa Martina, eh, io ti ho detto no, che i due ragazzi hanno mandato tutto. Tu sì. Non... sì, volevo sapere, ho riscontro. Sì, sì, ho ricevuto tutto, ho archiviato e ho dato alla prof, alle prof. Invece i consensi sono stati inviati da me, però non hanno ancora ricevuto le credenziali. Non no, abbiamo... no, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. ancora no. Okay. So... Bueno? Buono? Okay. Yeah. Tu te a bueno? <laughs> <laughs> Conny deve mangiare adesso, deve andare a mangiare, no? Eh, però Loro sono fare. sette ore indietro. Eh, sette quindi devi andare indietro. a pranzo, immagino. You, you have to, to, to lunch now, Connie. Uh, well, you have dinner. <laughs> Noi la cena. Cena. Eh, a cena. infatti. Uh, we'll have to have pizza. Everyone has to go eat pizza. <laughs> ok, so thank you. Um, grazie a tutti. Grazie, um, uh, grazie a lei. Uh, so, um, so Martina uh, Demande, um, next week, bring, uh, email the questions to us before the meeting. If they have questions, email us before the meeting. And that way we can ask Tony. And also, um, uh, you know, we can answer, we can help. So, um, you know, that would be good. So this group has the best question. Okay, quindi la, la prof ha detto mandateci pure le, le domande eh, prima dell'incontro, così le traduco in inglese e le inviamo direttamente alla professoressa Toni, che così può rispondere lei, va bene? Va okay. bene. Okay. Eh, okay. Scusa, scusa, c'è con, qualcuno di voi che, perché io non, la prossima settimana faccio fatica a esserci, c'è qualcuno che vuole provare a fare la traduzione? <ride> sì, va bene. No. <ride> sì, Marta, Chiara? Ci posso provare Chiara? se vuoi, okay, sono Chiara. Sì, va bene, eh. Chiara. Ok, ok. Maybe, Connie, maybe Chiara and Lucia they could uh, help them with translation for the next weeks because I'm not uh, available. That would so, be great. Yeah, Chiara Sorry, Martina, Chiara. I haven't volunteered because after COVID, um, sometimes I forget a lot of words. And so I don't <laughs> want to be a... Uh, uh, okay, no, but it's, re it's, re true. it's really true, okay? And uh, so I, I will try. If you be patient with me. <laughs> We will be patient. Okay, two, two, two Italian teachers, Lucia okay. and Chiara Lifredo. Okay. Uh, we'll help you with translation. Okay. That'll be good. And we'll work that out, you know, but I would like, I would like the Italians to be able to ask questions um, during the presentation so that mm -hmm. they can, we can hear the questions in English because we may need those answers too. Um, and then you can maybe chat 
you don't have to always speak, but you can chat the answer. You, you can ask in, in the chat and answer in the chat so that we can keep going, you know, and, and, the, and you can hear the answers right away or see the answers right away. Would that be oh, awesome. Yeah, we'll be a, we will be a duo. <laughs> also, Martina, I was thinking that the uh, questions in the chat, when they're asked by our teachers, my teachers and Connie's, then if you could let your teachers know what they're asking, that would be. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it is international. I mean, we are collaborating. Yeah. And yeah. that's part of diversity is learning. Where did pizza come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a part of it too is that we are all teachers, regardless of whether we're from Texas or Kansas or Italy, and we are learning from each other. And I think it's informative when we see that all of us have similar questions. Allora dice la prof Miller che eh, dovrei, dro, dovremmo insomma tradurre in italiano anche le domande delle insegnanti americane perché lei dice siamo un gruppo internazionale, possiamo in, eh, imparare che seppur ci troviamo in due posti veramente diversi e distanti però magari abbiamo in realtà le stesse domande eh, e quindi mm -hmm. si sì, creare proprio questo, questo gruppo internazionale quindi ok la prossima volta mm -hmm. I will do. Martina, usando la scuola um, dunque, Meet della, di Google, sì. uh, lo sai che um, fa simultaneamente la traduzione? Cioè io sì, ho sì. Fatto, e, e non potremmo utilizzare invece che... È una novità, è una novità di, 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 di eh, stare lasciata da, da Marco. Da pochi giorni, cioè diciamo che sono un paio di settimane che hanno attivato questo servizio. Perché non usiamo... Eh, adesso lo dico alla prof. Cioè, sarebbe Annie? fantastico perché io parlo in, it in italiano e traduce, e viceversa, chi parla mm -hmm. in inglese traduce in italiano. Yeah. Io Alessandra, dire... yeah. Alessandra suggests to use uh, Google Meet because with Meet we, we have the opportunity to have translation into, yeah, so, but I don't know. What do you feel? Yeah, um, I, I, um, I like the capacity of Zoom for the video quality, but um, we, we can talk about that because I know that Google, Google Meets is better for translation. It works, it, it, right? I mean, that works better. I haven't, used, um, I haven't used Google Meets as much as I have Zoom, um, but we want to make sure You know, I think, I don't know why we couldn't use Google Meets for, um, for our diversity talks, you know, like what Joyce will do on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Sandra, I, I think, you know, the ones Tony is in, I'd have to ask her if it's okay. Um, we, we could try Google Meets on Friday. But we have to we have to have new links for that if we do that. We have to change all the links. So you know we have to you know make a decision and but we could we could try Google Meets on Friday on third on Friday. Okay. Dice la prof che possiamo provare anche già da venerdì a usare Meet. Ehm, però bisogna cambiare link quindi dobbiamo avvisare tutti gli insegnanti e dopo vengono fuori confusione e quindi eh, vabbè, eh, le avvisiamo e speriamo che, eh, che io eh. credo che sia utilissimo davvero sì, 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 sì. così cioè, ma we, poi proprio è immediata la traduzione cioè, we, we, okay. sorry, sorry Alessandra I just, um, we just have to make sure that we don't lose people because we've already we haven't sent the, calendar, the, the new schedule out too much um, Joyce what do you think do you think it'd be worth trying the Google Meets on Friday with Sandra would they have to have the software would they have to download anything mm -hmm. our students it's, it's pretty easy it's pretty much you have a link you're in you yeah. know it's just a lot better with translation. Okay. 
I, I think yeah. that Zoom has pretty good translation. We just haven't learned to use it very well. Um, you know, it works better if you have like a live translator. Um, so I don't know, maybe Lucia or <laughs> Chiara will help us with that at some point. <laughs> because um, it's hard to do everything all at once, you know? So, uh, but let's, I don't know. No we, is it okay? With Friday, we'll try Google Meets. Okay. With Sandra? Yeah. Because we, we really, not many people have that link. Just mostly us, the research team, you know, so. We just have to replace the link that you have in the chart with the. Yeah. Group. Yeah. And, and not send the chart out yet. <laughs> <laughs> just the link <laughs> okay well, well I've already um, sent the chart. <laughs> uh, yeah but just us we I haven't sent it out did you send it out to all your students oh okay that's why I'm saying they um they have it and just replace that the present link with the new link it, as long as as long as it will update it, yeah. If, if it updates it, I don't know if it's live that way. It might not. So we'll we we have two days to make sure they know, and we can put we can start posting these things in Google Classroom too. As people go into Google Classroom, we can post the links in there, so people will have up to the minute. Um, and Joyce will just have to email everybody, um, but. I think if you can get them in Google Classroom, that would be good. And then we can update it. I, I think it's worth trying on Friday. Okay. And, and we'll see how many people we lose. <laughs> At least it'll be recorded. <laughs> okay. Um, I have another meeting in a minute. So um, ciao, everyone. And thank you. Um, bueno appetito. Bye bye. Okay, thank you, Gretzi. Thank you, too. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Buona serata, ciao a tutti. Ciao. Bye.